Dude! <laughs> this is legit! <laughs> the, the... Oh my god, I'm so scared, dude. Oh no! <laughs> well, that broke. <laughs> I'm gonna be using this 3D printer to make a fully rideable bike. Again, let me explain. A few months ago, I tried 3D printing my dream bike. There were highs and some real bad lows, but I said if this video gets 20,000 likes or more, I'm gonna try V2. I'm a man of my word. So this time I'm trying to get in with one goal. The bike must be rideable. For V2, I could have just tweaked what I did last time now that I have more experience and a much better printer, but where would the challenge be in that? First, instead of using Onshape to model the bike, so many of you commented that I should try the free version of Fusion that I had to try it. Then I've got my dream road bike already. Yeah! But you know what bike I don't have or have never ridden? A time trial bike. I think an Ironman would be cool to do someday and after watching Rick Zabel unbox his Canyon Speed Max, I knew I needed one. First I needed to learn the basics of Fusion, so I found some great tutorials by Product Design Online and spent the next six hours following along with his videos and with the basics down, I wanted to see if there was a tutorial that could help me get started with modeling the bike and found someone who teaches a class on Fusion 360 showing you how to sculpt a bike frame? Yes! I opened Fusion, brought in a picture of the bike and got to playing with the Play-Doh. I pulled and stretched and tweaked and after about 10 hours of modeling, I had this beauty. Honestly, I was so impressed with myself with how good it looked and how much it looks like the actual bike, but there were all these issues of finalizing it. So I reached out to some friends and Leo helped resolve the main issues, but then Rich, Mitch, and Morley all gave me the same advice. If you're going from zero, yeah. if I were you, I might try to do my own design. So I ignored them and kept working on trying to get the handlebar figured out. But eventually I stopped and realized I don't want this to be a repeat of last time. And although I'm gonna be losing over 15 hours of work if I stop now, that has to be better than losing over 100 hours of work and wasting a ton of filament if the bike doesn't end up working. So I scrapped it. Well, back to square one. <laughs> This time though, square one, we're gonna design a bike for 3D printing. I don't really know what that means, but my here's what my mind goes to. I started by trying to figure out what the main forces will be that I had to contend with so the bike wouldn't do this. And after lots of thinking and failing and thinking again and failing again, I had this basic design. And since my wheels basically collapsed immediately last time, I went with one of Morley's ideas. What if the wheel could be printed in one piece? So I checked how big the H2D can print using both nozzles, put that in, made the rest of the design, and boom! I kind of like this. This is the first rough sketch, and I, I think it's doable. Now to actually start modeling. I made the wheel mimicking Alexander Chappell's design and started on the frame, figured out half the fork, cut the top tube, mirrored the forks, made the handlebar with these little supports, tried making a way to hold the seat, but failed. So I tackled the grips, then the axles mimicking Matt Denson's design, cranks, spacers, and wanted to get an idea of how long the tires would take to print that. Oh my God. Instead of just sending it, I made a little version to see if it would be strong. Whoa. This thing actually looks so legit. Holy crap, that's strong. Whoa, okay, I think test passed. I also wanted to test the fit of the wheels, axles, and cranks, so I made some mini versions out of PLA and the axle fit. This isn't supposed to happen. So I asked my friend Brendan if he thought a triangle would be better, and instead he came back with a genius idea. He suggested actually doing a circle that you cut the top and the bottom off of. Genius, man. Some people are so smart, dude. So I changed the axle, wheels, cranks, and spaces, and before wasting any more filament, I cut up some small portions of the parts that need to fit, printed them out of PLA, and tested. The wheel assembly spun decently, and so did the handlebar. So I tried to learn how a pedal was made, don't know how I would print that, tried to modify one I found online, no luck. So I pivoted to try and make the cranks accept the pedal, and that is perfect. Also, I finally figured out a way to secure the saddle on the bike, which was a big win. Then I started making all these little Vs all around the frame that I was gonna use to cut it, but before I did, I called up Brendan again to see if he had any good ideas, and dovetails, genius. I sent the cranks and axles to print and got to work on putting dovetails throughout the entire bike. Then my friend Connor, an actual mechanical engineer, suggested making a change to this tube and making the dovetails rounded. So I went back, made the changes and exported the full bike for the first time. It was a strange feeling, seeing so much work just laid out on nine little build plates. I took out the cranks and axles, gave them a max strength test, they passed. Oh. Then started on the first piece of the frame while my friend Jory knocked out one of the forks on his X1C. While those were going, I printed a test piece of the part that would hold the saddle and found it didn't fit and was and angled properly. So I fixed that, started printing the next part of the frame, but I've got a problem. No. These are supposed to go really tightly into each other. Look at this. What the hell? There's not supposed to be any play there. This is a finished fork. It's supposed to go on the bottom. Why is there so much play? There should be zero play. So I don't know what to do. 
but eventually figured out the thin extrude function I used to cut the frame up actually extrudes a thin space between the parts. Go figure. All of this has already been so much filament and I feel like I could either just reprint something that'll take up the little space here or I just reprint everything. It's been four days of printing and I think three kilograms of filament so far between these parts. As I'm saying it, I'm leaning more towards just reprinting everything so that I know there's not an issue. I think that's the right play, man. All right, we're, we're starting over. I fixed that issue, set the parts to print again, and used all of my test prints and mistakes to make art and enough of the assembled bike to check the size. Everything still seemed good to go, so I grabbed some filament and brought some to my friend Dave, who also has an H2D and offered to print some parts. Joey let me bring his printer to my place to help speed things up. Thanks, Joey. They moved on to the scariest part of this build, the wheels. Long story short, these wheels should be impossible to print. You have two very different filaments that need to be printed, very different settings, but need to be made at the exact same time. I already made the small tires, so I was confident I wouldn't have issues with the big... Yeah, it failed. I put some glue down and tried again, thinking, all right, maybe the part just didn't stick. No, no, it failed again. Good news is I had even more parts to get a sense for the size of the bike and found my knees would be right in the way of the handlebar. So I made the neck of the handlebar a little longer, changed some print settings for the wheel, and sent it to print for a third time. It's coming along, finally. Cross my fingers. But then I noticed something weird on the wheel print. I thought I saw a little wobble while I was passing by and wow, it's lift, the whole bed is lifted up. It's not on. See how here it's down, here it's not. Which means this whole side of the print is lifted up. That's insane. I don't know that could happen. What do I do? Three days of printing. Three days of printing. I put a little spacer in there to hopefully stop the plate from spinning like this. I hope this works. Okay. I 3D printed. There's these little clips you can make that will keep the print bed down, and then I glued it. Fourth time trying to print this. Let's hope it works. Keep having failures. It keeps clogging. The nozzle just keeps clogging. We were good until like 60% of the way through. Now it's at the point where it goes like four minutes of printing clog, four minutes of printing clog. On a three day print, that's a lot, man. I don't know what to do, but we're 75% of the way done. I'm not stopping this tire. We have to figure this thing out. I tried to clean things up, didn't work. Pulled out the PTFE tube, no luck. And no matter what I did, things kept failing, but it would get a few layers done between every failure until... Okay, morning. The wheel is either gonna have a green light on the printer or a red light. I haven't looked yet. I haven't looked yet, because I want my first response to be with you. Green, my life is good. Red, my life sucks. Okay, I'm turning, you, you look first. What do you see, what do you see? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I thought that'd be a green or a red light. Does that mean? Yes! 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 Oh, it finished! Look, there's the green light. Oh, yes! Yes, thank you, Lord. Go on. Completed wheel. Oh, wow. This is so awesome. Yes, so long. So long. This took almost three days to print, but feels like over a week I've been struggling with this. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. One wheel down, one left to go. Now here's a predicament I'm in. Something that I changed is working now. I was initially gonna like take everything apart, clean it all, try to figure out what was causing the problems, but something has worked. So do I just press start? Hell no, I took everything apart, gave it a good Saturday morning Dominican clean, oh, put man. the plate clips back in, glued the plate, and sent the next wheel to print. Lovely. Oh, that's like the perfect, that feels like a nice inflated tire. Yo, it works! One tire done. Man, this is gonna be rideable. The moment has come. We are going to now assemble the bike. Here's the issue I'm having though. I would love to put all these pieces together with do a dry fit first to make sure that everything fits and feels good. But <laughs> I tried to dry fit something and the issue is, Ooh. Plus, I don't have time to reprint anything if it does need reprinting. So at this point, we're just gonna send it. Let's put this bike together. Hello, I'm the freshest in the place when I last with my body. Ah, well, that happened quick. Head to toe while stripping this style. Die. Put a million dollar smile. Cannot be me. Never could.
could you see me? Yes! Yes! Yo, are you kidding me? There's the bike! <laughs> Babe, come look at my bike. Whoa. <laughs> That's so tiny. <laughs> Kevin, this is smaller than what I need. How are you going to fit on this? I want it to be for like all people. I want everybody to be able to ride Because okay. the wheels aren't on. Imagine the wheel is going to add another good chunk. It's not that. It's that even my legs are going to hit the handlebars. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have a good solution for that yet. But It's cute. It looks like a children's bike. In, in a sexy way though, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to use just some regular pedals on the bike, but every other part of the bike is 3D printed, so now that has me feeling like, man, I'd feel weird about this being like one of the only pieces not 3D printed besides the bearings and the screws to hold it together. So I'm gonna try to design this. Initially, when I was first designing the bike, I thought, I don't know how I can make this happen, but now I think I have a plan. Yeah! Pedals off the printer. New axle. Let's see how well this works. Okay, there we go. Oh. No way! Dude, that's perfect! No way it worked out that <laughs> Look at how perfect that works. This gets screwed in. No way, dude, get out of here. I made a pedal. <laughs> I wish you could feel this. It's, like, it's nice. Look at that. It spins better than an actual pedal that came with my bike. <laughs> no way. That's sick. The pedal. Done. Once the test pedals work, I finished printing them with the fancy filament, got the cranks and spindles tapped at my local bike shop, and the second wheel failed. I was hoping we'd found the secret sauce. Evidently not. But I did eventually figure out why. If you look closely, there's this white buildup happening everywhere inside the machine. It tinted the glass, got all over the nozzles, and most importantly, I found that it was building up and sticking to the TPU line as it was going in and causing clogs. Once I figured that out, I did a bunch of cold pulls to make sure that the line was actually clean and set the tire to print again. I feel like a detective who just solved the case. Like, I did the clues, figured it out, did it, solved it. It's working, at least momentarily. Ooh. Early the next morning. Oh yes, it didn't fail overnight. Oh yes, it didn't fail overnight. Oh man, we're are we about to catch this thing finished? No way. One minute left. Yes! 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 It printed. It printed. Last major part is done. Oh my god. This may be like the biggest, most complex multi-material print that anyone's ever done. Based on the feedback that Bamboo Lab has given me. And we just did it twice. I'm proud of this, man. Then I'll tell you at the end how much filament I used to print it, how long it took to design and print, and then how much this costs as is if you wanted to print it out of the same materials. Boom, that's it. The completed bike. But we gotta see if this thing rides. <laughs> Yo, this, this is so cool. <laughs> this is where the bikes go. You're a bike now. Before you were just plastic, now you're a bike. I do feel very attached to this thing. It actually feels pretty good rolling. I wanna see if it supports my weight. The last bike completely collapsed as soon as I put any weight on it. No cracking. Yes. Will it scoop? Oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> this is legit. <laughs> the, the... Oh no. <laughs> well, that broke. <laughs> yeah, I should have seen that one coming. We printed the cranks. I had the cranks tapped. Went to actual metal pedals and went out again for another try. Wait, wait, wait. Do I need a? That feels so funny to ride. Okay, come on. Hey, we got a bike. Yo, this actually works. <laughs> then a few people who've helped with either of the two builds actually got to come and ride the bike. Woo! Babe. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's really working. All right, now for all the details. I modeled for 46 hours to get this thing made. And if you want to make this exactly as is, not including all my failures or reprints or prototypes, it's going to be 15 and a half days of printing, 7 kilos of PETCF, 3.1 kilos of PAHTCF, 4.1 kilos of TPU, and half a kilo of PPACF. Bring in the total cost, if you want to make this exactly as is, to $1,046.75. There are a bunch of improvements that I'm sure that somebody can make. So if you want to take a crack at that, all the files are available at kevdoes.com. And that's going to include everything from the Fusion file that you can go and modify, all the bamboo settings with everything so that you can just press print, and a list with links of every single thing that you'll need to get this project done. Thank you so much to Jory and Dave for helping me print this. Thank you Morley, Brendan, Rich, Mitch, and Ken from Bamboo for all the technical help that you provided in getting this thing done. And thank you to you for all the love on that last video. It was super fun reading through all the comments. If this video gets 50,000 likes or more, I'll electrify this. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no way It's a sturdy little gal. <laughs> what should we name her? Oh, like, like Striga.